Roll call, please, Mr. Teaches. Mr. Cooney? Here. Dr. Cornelino? Here. Mr. Grau? Dr. Kane? Here. Mr. Mazzucaro? Mr. Morella? Here. Mrs. Novi? Mr. Palma? Here. Mrs. Richmond? Here. Shannon Chang? Here. And Zion Codrick? Here. Warm present. Okay, thank you. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend the meetings of public bodies in which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, Montville Township Board of Education approved this meeting date. Notice of the meeting has been posted at the Municipal Building, Montville Public Schools, Montville Public Library, Montville Township Board of Education Administrative Office Building, Montville Public School website, and advertised in the Daily Record. Okay, thank you. We'll hear from our high school representatives. Welcome and good evening. Thanks for having us. Uh, for information pertaining to sports, the girls varsity volleyball team finished their season at the Group 3 state quarterfinals on Tuesday, November 12th. The girls ended with an overall record of 26-4, the most wins in Montville history. Senior Nicole Devaretsky amassed 1,000 career assists. Boys varsity football won their last game of the season on Saturday, November 16th with a score of 13-7. Two seniors signed National Letters of Intent this month, Megan Paterno signed for softball at Hofstra University, and Abby Hameson signed for lacrosse at Sacred Heart University. On the club front, on Tuesday, November 5th, Key Club held a pumpkin smash. Conklin Farms donated all their leftover pumpkins, and all proceeds benefited lung cancer research in honor of the Nettie family of Montville. Uh, Montville Township High School's food drive started yesterday, mon Monday, November 18th, and will run through Friday, November 22nd, with all donations going to the Kiwanis Food Pantry. Donations are collected by Homeroom, and Key Club is sponsoring a bagel breakfast for the Homeroom with the most participation. And Student Activities Council is actually donating $250 to the class with the most participation. Forensics hosted a competition at Montville High School on Saturday, November 9th, where the team placed second overall. Then on Saturday, November 16th, they traveled to Manville, where they placed first. And the Forensics Club actually achieved national recognition by the National Forensic League by reaching over 300 degrees and being placed in the top 1% of the NFL chapters nationwide. It earned membership in the league's prestigious Associate Div 300. And senior Emily Morera was a recipient of the 2013-2014 National Hispanic Rec Recognition Program Scholarship. Although the NHRP does not provide monetary awards, being named is an important academic achievement. The Montville Township High School Percussion Ensemble was selected to play at a session for the New Jersey Music Educators Association Conference in New Brunswick in February. They will represent the Montville Township High School as a presenter in an event that many performers, musicians, and teachers from different schools and universities attend. Montville Township High School held their annual fall play on Thursday, November 14th, and Friday, November 15th. This year's production was almost made. The cast and crew did a phenomenal job on both nights. And as for upcoming events, um, on November 24th, Student Activities Council and School of Rock will be holding a concert in the school auditorium. Part of the money raised will be donated to the Kiwanis Food Pantry as part of the food drive. What was the date of that? November, oh, November 25th, sorry. No, November 25th? Monday, yeah. I think I wrote it wrong. <laughs> what concert is that day coming back? Nighttime, Nighttime. 7.30. <laughs> so how are your college applications going? I applied early, actually I was such a different school, right? I'm in the middle of all my essays because now the season's over so I have more time. So I've heard a lot on the news that there's been problems with Common App this year. Are yeah. you experiencing that? Um, kind a of little bit. Inputting information, that's the only part, but other than that, it's kind of, you're right, but it's not too bad. A few of my school deadlines were... Extended? Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good luck. Well, can, I, can I just uh, say something? I, two of you mentioned the accomplishments of the forensics team over the weekend and, and last weekend. That Society of 300 is, is a very special thing. It's coveted. Uh, Mrs. Gormley, who has been uh, the head of the forensics team for so many years, I believe, I don't recall this happening previously. Uh, and I just wanted to take a moment. I know I see a couple of students in the back there, one who's heavily involved in the forensics team. Um, and I uh, just wanted to say that Mrs. Gorman has done a remarkable job and has prepared so many students, 
not just for forensics, but for life with the program that she runs. Thank you, Matt. Um, superintendent's report. Hi, good evening, everyone. The only, um, the only report I have this evening is on the uh, park testing program. Um, as the board is aware from a previous conversation, uh, this is the year that the park tests in New Jersey will be field tested, and they will actually be given for real um, a year from this spring, um, <clears throat> in the spring of 2014. Um, I'm sorry, in the year of 2015, I should say. This spring will be 2014. We initially had been um, approached by the uh, state to um, pilot the park tests in two of our elementary schools. Um, we could have, we had the option of uh, saying yes or no to those field tests and we decided that we would in fact say yes so that we had some experience using both our technology and understanding what the tests itself, themselves would be like. Uh, since responding yes, uh, the state has reached out to us and I'm sure many other districts as well uh, because they had the need for uh, some expanded uh, field testing and have now asked us if we could do field testing in each of our seven schools. Um, we also feel that that is uh, an advantage, something to say yes to. Um, I just have a draft uh, that I'll call for the uh, the board at this time of what we're looking at, and I'll describe this to the public and community as uh, we're reviewing it. So, what I've just given to the board um, uh, lists each of our seven schools and talks about the grades in each school that will be, has been identified to go through some of this field testing. Um, at Cedar Hill, they've actually chosen th three different uh, pilots to happen. Um, I have appealed back to the state, um, saying that we would like to eliminate one of those opportunities. The other schools in our district either have two or one except for the high school, and I'll describe that in a second, but um, we thought it was a burden for Cedar Hill to have three. They had two in fourth grade and one in fifth. The two in fourth grade are in the area of mathematics. Um, one is a, a spring test. The spring test dates are between March 24th and April 11th. Um, one is an end-of-the-year test in math, and that's between May 5th and June 6th. Um, and for each of those pilots, they're asking us to select two classes. So the third pilot in Cedar Hill was in the grade five in English language arts. We've asked them to, um, to take that away from us. I haven't gotten a response back from them at this point. Um, at Hilldale, uh, both pilots are in grade three. They're both in mathematics, two sections in each grade, uh, or two sections for each of the, the pilots. One is the spring testing, one is the end of the year testing. At Valley View, both in grade four, again mathematics, two classes um, as well, or two sections as well. Um, and again, one is spring, one is end of the year. William Mason, only one pilot in grade three, so two classes, and this is the end of the year testing. Woodmont, only one pilot in grade three, this is, and William Mason was ELA, by the way, and Woodmont is ELA as well, two classes, um, and this is spring testing at Woodmont. Um, Lazar, one pilot in grade eight, in ELA, again, two classes. This is spring testing. And at the high school, uh, three different testing opportunities, one in grade nine in English language arts, 
for, th for two classes, and that is spring testing. In geometry, of course, that could be mixed grades in geometry, um, and that is, again, for two classes, spring testing, and finally, algebra two, which can also be um, mixed grades, uh, two classes, and that's end of the year. Um, these tests do not count for our students. Parents will not receive a grade, I don't believe, about how their children did. It's simply a way for the state to begin to understand if they produced reliable and valid test questions. That's why they do this. The statisticians have to look at responses and understand if they've actually produced reliable and valid test questions. They also have to understand if the time allocated for the testing period is the right amount of time. So um, the test itself for a particular grade, um, Andrea, what would be the, the amount that they'll tell us? Uh, is it 85 minutes or something? Was that the? For one of the ELA, it's 85 minutes. Um, and so they add. 45 additional minutes to just figure right. out. Right. So their continue. initial prediction is that the testing period would be, let's say, 85 minutes for the test. But then if students aren't finished, they're telling, to, telling us extend the test by another amount of time. Electronically, the computer will probably tell them how long it took a child to finish. Again, consider they're doing this with thousands of kids then they'll get an adequate sense of that this is not a test that really should be 85 minutes, it should be 90 minutes or 93 minutes. They'll get a sense when kids finish about how long it should take. So that's what the pilot is for. It's to understand if the questions are valid and reliable, to understand how long the testing period should take. From my point of view, it gives us a chance to make sure our technology is going to be adequate as we go through the process a year from the spring and also that familiarize our teachers with the kinds of questions that are being asked and the kind of demands that are made on our kids. When these tests have a period of time that overlap with the NJ ask, we will have the children take the NJ ask first, um, and I believe that comes in the end of the year testing. Andrea, that's correct, isn't it? So the end of the year testing is from May 5th through June 6th, we would have the NJ ask happen first. So this way, that would be done as it's done every year, where teachers have the chance to do their preparation. The children are fresh, they're not worn out because they first took this pilot and then have to take the NJ ask. They'll take the NJ ask as they take it every year, and then uh, sometime a couple of weeks later, we'll have them, if they were one of the classes selected, take the pilot. Um, I'm guessing the kids will find it a bit interesting that it's online, um, it's unique, um, there's no pressure, there's no results that they're gonna have to worry about. Um, and I again think it's to our advantage to, um, to have them take it. The other question I'm sure is on the mind of parents and I'll, I'll be writing a letter to the community following this conversation, letting the community know, parents know what's going on. Um, is how will we select the two classes? We have typically three at each grade level in our elementary schools. How will we pick two? Um, well, if we're um, looking at a spring testing and a um, um, end of year testing in the same grade level, we'll expose all three classes most likely to the test. One class would do both spring and end of the year, because we have to, we only have three to choose from. But well, we'd have each of the classes have that opportunity, that experience. Um, if it's only gonna be one testing period, uh, we're asking our principals to um, um, almost at random choose two of the classes. Um, we want to, I think, choose a, uh, a class at the secondary level, which isn't necessarily an honors class or an enriched class, or um, again, to choose classes that are representative of students from 
um, um, all different um, achievement levels. So again, there's a wide variety of learners who are having the experience. So, um, and, and there'll be more conversations with, with um, Andrew and myself and our, and our principals over uh, making those selections. So, any questions from the board? That's correct. So then, um, it's just interesting to make them take the NJS. I guess the testing is testing. And like you get some benefit from whatever testing information and data that you um, accumulate. I just think, uh, I, I just don't want parents to be concerned about children overlapping tests because you know, they're gonna do, NJS is going to be replaced anyway. Right, and this is why we would, again, have the um, end of the year testing take place after the NJ ask so that there wouldn't be any um, interference or concern that um, our child has just sat for, you know, X amount of hours of testing, and now the NJ ask is coming three days later, and it's going to be detrimental. Again, we would make sure that it's free and clear, so to speak, up to the NJ ask test date, and then a period of time later on, um, administer the uh, the pilot. The other thing is, are the, because I know parents always talk about um, on occasion that the teach, teachers can teach to the test, um, which I know that they do during you know on occasion during um, NJS, so that the children are prepared for the test. But will the teachers be aware of what's on the part where this is just? Will they be able to inform the children of what to be? Well, the um, the teaching to the test aspect of, of PARC and uh, looking at, again, the common core curriculum, which the PARC is testing, um, is more complex that we know than the older ASK tests we're going to be now. What we hear from the state is that the ASK test that will take place this spring will start to move toward testing the Common Core. Um, but they admittedly, in a multiple choice kind of format, which the ASK is, they admittedly can't uh, produce the same kinds of challenging uh, questions that will start to appear on the PARC assessments. Uh, park assessments and Andrea last spring went around to all of the schools and presented to every faculty what the change will start to look like and then this year our supervisors and principals have been working with our teachers about what the new curriculum calls for and the kinds of assessment questions that we could be expecting um, as this comes along while certainly but we know that our teachers' teaching will help prepare kids for all the assessments. Um, it is not as black and white, if you will, for the new assessments. The new assessments are, are multi-layered, uh, where kids are, um, rather, than, rather than a series of computational problems in math, for example, the actual test question involves using a variety of different you know, parts of your mathematical thinking to solve several questions embedded within the problem. So it may be a problem that encompasses um, both um, um, both number order as well as geometry within one problem. So that kids have to use a variety of skills to solve it. Uh, EOI is end of year and PBA is? Problem-based. Problem-based problem assessment. And what's the difference between the two? Um, the difference really is um, 
that the, uh, well, the end of the year comes after uh, all of the year's material has been taught and the PBA is after what percent, Andrea? Seventy. Uh, the, the problem-based assessments um, are a little bit more in-depth. That's where you'll get that multi-layer because they take up a little bit more time, especially the English language arts. EY, EOY um, will be more sh short response than the other one. So because you're, like Paul said, you are um, allowing, there's more curriculum that you cover. So they'll, they're going to try to get as much as of that in. So when the testing actually starts, um, they'll be tested twice, once for the PBA and another for the end of year? Um, nine days total. The PBA is um, broken up into three days for English language arts, two days for mathematics, and then the end of the year is two days for English language arts and two days for mathematics. And the, the PBA is always administered in, in the spring, in, in March? For 75% of the school year. And, and then the end of year, at the end of the year? 90%. I just want to add, Andrea, um, I know you said nine days. How much time per day? Uh, a little over an hour per day as it's set up now. But that could change after they get the results from the field test. Right, because it might take longer to take yes. one section of the test. But third it's not grade, like third grade is a little less. Long for nine days. Third grade is a little less than an hour, and then from fourth grade to eleventh grade, they're a little over an hour each day. One of one of the challenges we're facing <clears throat> is the um, the actual administration of the assessments, which is again, as I mentioned before, a reason we want to try this out. Because if we try with a small sample, two classes, <clears throat> we'll get a perspective about what does it mean in terms of location, what does it mean in terms of time, uh, what does it mean in terms of the headsets the children need. Um, <clears throat> one thing the Board of Education and community can expect to see in our budget as we move forward into this year is a good amount of dollars being spent on uh, laptops or Chromebooks um, because we need many of these instruments in order to adequately have enough devices to test our children within the window of testing possibilities. Um, <clears throat> so you mean we're not getting that donated from the state? Oh, I forgot that. <laughs> no. So it's, uh, it's another unfunded mandate. Another unfunded mandate. and. Um, as we've looked very carefully at what this means, uh, we have two options. One is to use the present computers that exist in our labs um, <clears throat> and spend less on buying new devices, or um, again, not using those and spending more money. The issue with using what already exists is that for this window of, in, of time, and as you can see, March 24th to April 11th, and then again, May 5th to June 6th, we would have to shut down all instructional programs that require us to be in our labs. That would include Rosetta Stone at the elementary levels and keyboarding. Um, at the middle school, it would consist of the computer class that takes place there as one of their elective courses that students are involved in. At the high school, again, it would take away the computer labs from our students. So we are leaning toward the more expensive solution because we don't want to stop instruction for um, weeks at a time uh, in order to test children. Uh, we want the curriculum and instruction to take place for our children while children are being tested. So some children will be tested, other children can continue to have their instructional program in the classroom and their, in their computer labs and music and art rooms and everywhere else. 
the whole school doesn't get shut down for this, the reason we have these long windows of time is because the state realizes we can't test everyone at once. It's no longer like the NJ asked. We test the entire grade today at 9 a.m. We test the students in the course. Um, they don't have to worry about, gee, Dr. Kane saw the questions. He's going to tell his friend the answers. Um, you have a month window of time in order to test the children. Um, so they're not concerned about the integrity of the test then? Well, they're not, John, because I think probably every time the test appears, it's a different version. Um, for sure, the questions are scrambled, and probably if they have a pool of 500 questions, each test maybe needs 60 questions, you might get a different 60 than I get. <clears throat> how, how do they actually read something like that? Because they're all on the same instructional level. Um, <clears throat> they're all asking us to perform the same kind of functions, except your question is, Mrs. Jones went to the store in X, Y, and Z, and mine is, you know, Mr. Smith got on an airplane and did this and that, so they're asking us to... The same concepts. Same concepts, the same applications, but entirely different questions. With electronically, they have the ability to do all of those things. That was the next point I was going to make. So the good news in this purchase of equipment is that we'll be able to have more technology available for our students and teachers for their everyday instructional program the other nine months of the year. So we'll infuse our schools with more technology than ever before. The Chromebook is a less expensive way to go than a uh, regular laptop. Um, it has some disadvantages in that I, I don't believe uh, it has a, it would have a Word, Microsoft Word package on it and so, so forth. So the primary use of it would be for, um, um, for research, to be able to access the internet and do research on, on the, on the uh, Chromebook. But it serves our purpose well uh, for the assessments. And isn't this something that maybe we should do in stages rather than all in one shot, or do you feel that we should do all in one shot? We have to be prepared for the spring of 2015. There's no way around that. And um, so, um, so as we're really talking about next year, this is the year to, to fund that. Um, Austin is looking at various uh, possible ways to, to fund this. Um, um, and is already exploring with different companies what, what they offer in the prices. But will our infrastructure currently be able to hold all those additional computers <clears throat> in the system? Well, there's a lot of work to be done. One of the things that's happening, and um, um, December 18th, is that the date, Casey? Pearson Learning. <clears throat> Pearson is the company responsible for the testing program. Uh, they recently contacted us and they're coming to see us with their team on uh, December 18th. And they'll be talking to um, Casey, who's our testing coordinator for the district, and to um, Austin um, and others. I think Mark, who's sitting back there, will be involved as well. Um, um, in terms of the infrastructure and what we're prepared for and what steps we still have to take in terms of our wireless capability, our um, our, our bandwidth in order to support the, the um, number of computers that are being used at once. So all of that is in, in process. So, so then the entire purchase would be out of next year's budget? Um, potentially. You know, before, as the board's aware, we've purchased computers over a, while well, we've purchased all of them, we've received all of them at once but sometimes we pay for them over a period of time. So I'm sure Jim was, is already thinking about how, in fact, we're going to fund these in a way that works for the district. Well, maybe the state will offer a grant, Paul. I'll, 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 look, I'll look out for that. Any other questions? 
So once again, um, I will get information out to our parents in the very near future. I'm trying to wait to hear if the state will, in fact, reduce one of those testing periods for Cedar Hill, because I'd rather send the information out once instead of twice. Um, and then I'll um, send out something to our community about the, uh, the plan. That's great. Does anyone in the public have any questions about this discussion? Hi, I'm Terry Mohadeen. I just wanted to ask if you're preparing to beef up your IT support. Is that going to be part of this discussion? Um, yeah, we have enhanced our IT support over the last two years, um, so since my arrival in the district we've added actually two uh, IT members to our team. I don't think at this point Austin Thompson, our Director of Technology, believes that um, um, we're in need of additional support. We're going to have Andrea Wallace at this meeting as well. She's our instructional technology coach. So uh, we do want to involve as many people who are knowledgeable in the technology area as possible. As of right now, uh, I don't have any requests from Austin thinking we're going to need additional IT support, but we'll see as time goes by. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Any, was there someone else? I thought I saw more than one hand. That's it. OK, thank you. Jim, Business Administrator Report. I just want uh, to the board on uh, where we are with the current uh, construction projects, uh, interior improvement projects. We uh, did begin the uh, expansion of the high school guidance suite, and we're anticipating completion of that by the, by the end of December. Um, at that point, we'll move forward with the other aspects of that, such as the uh, art room expansion uh, and a few other um, uh, smaller projects. They'll be completed during a schedule. Uh, breaks throughout the uh, rest of the school year. Uh, we're looking at uh, the Hilldale High School boiler replacements. Those are uh, pretty much totally done at this point, up and running and working. Um, looking at the locker room projects at the high school, uh, that is, is anticipating uh, substantial completion by the end of November and uh, scheduling inspections somewhere by the end of the first week of December and after that, uh, full use of the locker room. Um, and then the last project that we're still uh, continuing on is the uh, building air conditioning project. Uh, at this point, uh, the classroom air conditioners at uh, the Cedar Hill School, Valley View, William Mason, Woodmont, and Lazars have been uh, completed. Currently working on the Hilldale Elementary School. Uh, and then the only aspect of that uh, will be left will be uh, two rooftop uh, air conditioning units at the um, Cedar Hill and Woodmont schools for their, their APRs. Uh, we'll do those in the springs because we don't want to do roof penetrations uh, at this time of the year. And you mean roof, roof penetrations? Uh, because the rooftop units, the big units, we don't want to penetrate the roof with the outside of winter, so we'll wait till the spring to finish up those two. Um, and that is uh, my report this evening. Any questions? <clears throat> okay, are there any committee reports? I see Charlie's not here, so I guess we'll hold that. Um, CIT, Charlie's. I have one ad hoc committee report regarding the Lazar relocation. Um, the ad hoc committee did meet with representatives of the township. We had previously presented some options to the town, um, which involved to a more or less degree uh, turfing and adding baseball and softball fields to the two existing grass fields that are across from Lazar. Um, the township, however, citing issues of scheduling and safety, uh, didn't have an interest in pursuing that. So we are now looking at plans to um, redesign and optimize. Uh, our existing high school field, so we're exploring those options now. Um, any delegate liaison reports? New Jersey School Boards met uh, this past Saturday. Uh, they held their 
a twice a year delegate assembly I attended. Um, they talked about some of their accomplishments this year. They have a task force on student achievement. They have a task force, on, we'll be starting a task force on training. They already have a task force on special education. Um, and they are starting a parent advocacy site on their website. It's called Parent Connections. Uh, and they have asked that school districts embed that site on our website. So, something that perhaps we can do. Um, Morris County School Boards is meeting tomorrow. Um, I invited our two board members elect to come with me, um, and we're going together, so I look forward to that. It's going to be uh, at Dover High School. Are there any other liaison uh, from Morris County Educational Commission? Something? Dak? Anything? Well, I think we completed this meeting on Wednesday. Okay. Um, any PTC liaisons reports? I did attend Cedar Hill uh, last week. Um, and the one concern they raised was uh, transportation. Um, they asked that I pass along the concerns to the administration, which I believe they have also passed along to the administration at last week's President's Council regarding the timing of the pickup for some of the elementary routes. Sure. Uh, yeah, we actually, we did take a look at the, all of the elementary school routes um, because of the recent changes that we had to make to try to accommodate getting the kids to school uh, at the middle school level. Uh, we identified three routes um, uh, at, at one of the schools that we are going to amend. The notifications are going to be going out in the next week or so. We plan on making that change um, uh, right after the Thanksgiving break. Uh, it's going to be a small difference. We'll pick, they'll be able to pick the children up about five minutes later than they currently are. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's three routes, um, but we're afraid to make uh, changes any more extensive than that at this time because it is so tight, you know, getting these children to school, to middle school, uh, in the entire map. What we are going to do, though, however, is take a look to see what we can do in terms of uh, redesigning and rebidding some of these uh, routes out this spring and make some improvements uh, come the next September. So we're taking a hard look at that. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'll open it now for public participation, items on the agenda. <coughs> Terry Becker down the road. Uh, Mr. Tevis, I just wanted to ask on the air conditioning project, um, information that was given to us at President's Council, which may not be correct. Is there electricity currently um, up and running for the units that have been installed? I do not know the answer to that. I know that the units themselves have been installed. Okay. Um, I don't know if they've actually tested them yet um, because of the, of the temperatures outside. Okay. Um, if there is electricity, can we test them? Because one of the questions was if we wait until the spring, mm -hmm. and A, we have an issue, then we have to go backwards, and also if we have any kind of warranty Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to know now if we have trouble. Certainly, I can look at uh, you know what would be involved in doing that. Okay. Uh, and you'll let us know about the electricity because <laughs> the information uh, presidents had was that there was not electricity servicing the new units. Okay, I can check. Right. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Um, Karen Mohadeen, 3 Sylvan Drive in Pinebrook. This came up kind of sideways, Dr. Freed. Um, so this year the children are learning the Common Core for the first time. They're being tested on the NJS for the last time. Are you expecting there to be a dip in scores? Is there some kind of disconnect? Um, <clears throat> so is there a disconnect? That's a good question. I've been wondering about that myself. Um, I think that, and again, if Andrew or Casey have additional information, but I think that the premise is that there are um, 
that the individuals involved in helping create the statistics will be able to understand the transition from the NJ ASK to the park and still be able to measure growth. Now, I don't know if that is a statistically sound um, possibility, um, but the state feels as if they're going to be able to have a smooth transition between the two different ways of testing. We know that in this last administration of the NJ ASK, they are moving toward the Common Core curriculum. Right. They're telling us they did. Um, But then the transition, as you're asking, I think, between the ASK and the PARC, um, I think it's, again, still to be yet to be seen what that's going to look like in terms of how you're going to uh, take two tests, which are pretty unrelated in many aspects. Um, but there's, again, the statisticians, I'm sure, have some sort of formula they're going to use to try to make that connection between the two. Okay. I was also asking, um, but this year's NJS scores, if they do dip slightly, in the rubrics, which are determining next year's placements, do you foresee you would have to adjust them a little? If you see the NJ ask, it's, or you do that after the fact? I would imagine we first have to see what the scores look point. like to, to understand right. um, <clears throat> whether or not some adjustments need to be made. Okay. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further public, I'll close public participation and entertain a motion for items I through O. Got it? Oh, plus the addendum? Plus the addendum. Plus the uh, Jackie and John? Okay, any questions on the minutes? Any questions on Jay? Okay. L? M? M and O. And I just remind those board members who have checks uh, on the bills list to abstain on their check. Roll call, please. Ms. Rachel? Yes. Mr. Morell? Yes. Mr. Cooney? Yes, and I'll abstain on K1 check 74211. Huh? Staying on the October 21st minutes, yes, on everything else. Dr. Kane? You just need to say your say on your check. So, uh, yes, on everything, including the addendum, aside from that K1 item. So, no. And uh, Dr. Portolino? Yes. I accept staying on project. Thank you. Motion's passed. Um, any additional business? Um, National Honor Society held their induction last night. Was it last night? Was it last night? Um, as always, a beautiful ceremony. And uh, I just wanted to personally thank the marching band for inviting the board as their guests to their banquet last week. Anybody else? Mike attended the marching band dinner as well. And Matt was at National Honor Society yesterday. Um, under general board comments, 
November ballot position of board candidates. Um, Mike? Yeah, this is just based upon an observation that, I'll tell you, when I voted, I almost didn't vote for the board because you had everything together like this, the candidates, then you had some space, and then underneath that, you had like a little block for the Board of Education. And I heard a lot of people say, you know, they either didn't see it or almost didn't see it. And I'm saying, is that possible? You know, you look at the numbers, and we had the leading Republican candidate who's running against two Democrats with 3,600 votes, and a person running uncontested for a Board of Education election with 2,300. Something's wrong somewhere. Um, I think the ballot needs to be reconstructed because I honestly and truly think a lot of people did not see that position there. I can't believe that many people would have willingly abstained on a Board of Education election. I was just wondering if, anyone, if there's been any other feedback. Uh, I can tell you at the delegate assembly, I heard rumblings from other districts and other counties about how uh, ballot positions were not optimal. Um, I think there were less complaints this year than last year. Uh, but I have to agree with Mike. It's, we were buried at the bottom. Um, and I'm wondering if it wouldn't behoove us to at least note our discontent on the position uh, with the county clerk. Um, I have a good idea. We have to send a letter. Resolution? Do a resolution for I don't know. Any, a letter? A letter? You want me to send a letter? I think we should draft a letter. Yes, on behalf of the board. Yep. Do you want me to do that? Yes. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, is there anything else? I, I just wanted to do a little bit of quick math. Jim, our 2% cap that we're entitled to grow by uh, each year is approximately how much money? It's $1.2 million. And then, so now with this park testing, we're going to be purchasing some computers, and you won't know how much that is for a period of time, right? Dr. Freed, the HIV, uh, also another unfunded mandate, has cost us countless thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of administrative time, etc. So at some point, the state is eating away into our 2% cap. Yes making it very difficult for us to go ahead and spend the things that we need to spend. Just wanted to make that point. I mean, with the HIV, I remember the districts did get some relief. Yeah, well, it was something. Is there any possibility of getting some relief based upon the need for the computer? It was a million dollars for the entire state. Right? Yeah, for the entire state. I and mean, we got some of it, I know. Yeah, we got like $3,000. I don't think it was 30. I know it was a trick. Well, it's, it's kind of like the districts getting a one dollar increase in state aid, so the government could say we had so many districts that had got an increase in state aid. Well, and 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 initially we lost thirty three thousand in the SDA assessment, which was thankfully reversed. But is there any possibility of petitioning for funds by using the unfunded, the unfunded mandate uh, claim? Yes, and, um, and the computers that's necessitated. I mean, it's something that uh, we can bring up when uh, we start to have more contact with the uh, officials, uh, although I'm not sure the representatives from Pearson have any say in any of that, but the state's in touch with us, as I mentioned, regarding the, uh, um, the number of sections being tested and so on. We can certainly bring that up to them. Happy to do that. Um, I'll open it now again to the public for items on or off the agenda. Okay, seeing none. Motion, motion to adjourn. Motion. John? Second. Frank? We're adjourned. Thank you.